Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Graham and I'm here representing Heli Direct and today we're going to be talking about servos. Now, servos are one of the cornerstones of the entire RC industry. This is what converts our electrical signals into physical movements, whether that's on a boat, a car, an airplane, or in our case, helicopter. These are the little devices that move our swashplate and our pitch slider that allows us to do these amazing maneuvers that we do in the air. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what servos are, rough idea of how they work, some of the features that you can get in today's market, and just some words of wisdom when it comes to comparing them. So with that said, let's get started. So what is a servo? Well, it's basically an electronic muscle. Similar to our muscles that receive signals from our nerves to move, a servo receives an electrical signal that says, hey, move the control arm to this position. Now, a servo is made up of four primary components. We have the microcontroller, the motor, the drivetrain, and a position sensor. So all four of these components have to work together in order to get the servo to behave and perform the way that we want it to. But how do they all work together? Well, it starts with the microcontroller. The microcontroller will receive a signal that says, hey, I need the control arm in this position. And it'll say, okay, well, where's the control arm right now? It looks at where the control arm is currently, where it needs to be, and it looks at that difference as an error, hint. And then it says, hey, motor, I need you to spin up so that you can move the control arm so it can get to where it needs to be. Now, as the control arm is moving, it's it is constantly, the microcontroller is constantly looking at the control arm's current position and its desired position and telling the motor to speed up, slow down, whatever it needs to do in order to get the actual position to match the desired position. This is constantly happening. Now, if you listen very carefully, this sounds a lot like a PID controller. And in fact, it is. All of our servos are PID controllers within themselves. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Now, let's talk about some of the features of modern day servos. At least when it comes to full size servos, pretty much all modern servos today are brushless. Um, this was, this is a big deal when you think about the history of RC, because several, a decade or several decades ago, servos were cordless. And I will tell you from experience that transition from cordless to brushless was not a smooth one. Even high-end brands, though the first generation brushless servos were not that great. I had several fail, but now that has become the standard. In addition to brushless servos, we now have servos that have that accept a wide range of voltages. We are now seeing a new generation of 12 volt servos. Um, over the past, again, 10 years, we've gone from 6 volts to 8.4, which was HV, now to 12 volts. Now, a quick point about this, why are we increasing the voltage? Well, if you remember a little bit from my previous video about batteries, it's all about power. And assuming that the power required to move the control arm is the same, if you increase the voltage, you drop the current. When you drop the current, you drop the overall load on the system because current is the real, it's the real challenge here. Not only that, if you have a BEC in your speed controller that's um, powered by the primary battery, it's a little bit easier to drop from whatever voltage it is to a higher voltage. What I mean by that is that it's easier to drop from 50 volts to 12 volts versus 50 volts to in extreme case, down to one volt. So it takes a little bit of a load, the load off. Now, do these servos, do these 12 volt servos actually perform better than our 8.4 or six volt servos? To be honest, I think the verdict is still out on this um, because we're reaching the point where the performance of our servos are so good that you're really not going to be able to tell a difference anymore. You may tell a difference in terms of how hot the servos get or how hot your wires get. But in terms of are these servos actually performing better? As of right now, for me, I'm not convinced. But it does reduce the load, the electrical load on your BEC and whatever else is powering them. So you're less likely to get brownouts if you have a BEC that's capable of doing 12 volts and is able to 
adequately deliver the power that it needs to. Another feature that I like to talk about is one of my favorite features is many servos, not all, but many servos now have removable leads. This is one of my favorite features simply because if I need to replace a servo um, or replace a uh, gear, gear train, control arm, it's really nice being able to take the entire servo out of the helicopter without having to undo all of my wiring. Because personally, this is a feature that is really important to me. All right, so this will conclude part one of my mini series on servos. Uh, be on the lookout for part two and three. In the meantime, if you are in the market for any servos, of course, go to Heli Direct and where you can buy all of your servos and servo needs. And so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And of course, thank you for watching and happy flying.